Hi. I'm going to be doing a little filming about how the angels and I respond, mostly the angels, how they respond to <clears throat> this book, W.V. Klein's Methods of Logic. <clears throat> and it's kind of a big book, but we're just going to do kind of a quick uh, cheering up of me because I feel kind of um, <clears throat> a little bit weary, um, mostly sleepy. That's pretty much what it is. All right, so um, first of all, it's got a kind of a special title, Methods of Logic. So it's like symbolic logic is something that is a puzzle to my neighbors sometimes about, you know, working things out symbolically with syllogisms and all. And this does talk about syllogisms a little bit. But um, as far as I'm concerned, I'm a logos, which means I don't have too much logic. Um, or you might say, instead of being irrational, I'm more than rational, um, being kind of a mystical, um, which is a word I don't like, but being kind of a, <clears throat> uh, someone who has a contact with their own angels. <clears throat> and everybody has angels, but... Basically, um, I contact my 24-7, and I married a lot of them. All right. So, I'm going to find an angel. I'm going to find Kabbalah. Well, she found me, pretty much, um, here. So, she's with me right now, Angel Kabbalah. And how are you doing, Kabbalah? T-O-V, she says. That means, that spells out Tov, which means good. Tov is the Hebrew for good. <clears throat> so, um, what do you think about W.V. Klein? She says, he's okay, but he's got some issues. Kind of like Humpty Dumpty, right? She says, uh-huh. He's a pretty interesting gentleman, but he needed help. <clears throat> All right. So, uh... Where do you want to begin, Kabbalah? To read in order to cheer me up? Go to page, what, 50? All right, I'm going to page 50 on Methods of Logic. And this is the first chapter called Truth Functions. And here, it's interesting that I said that I was weary because he's got a little, uh, example here, which says dreary rhymes with weary. So Kabbalah, am I weary or am I dreary? She says I'm weary, not dreary. <clears throat> I guess that's because I'm sleepy. And you know, the cure for sleep isn't so much rest right now, but being um, open with my um, publicity, with my filming of me and my angels talking about this book. So, Kabbalah, <clears throat> what would you say about us moving to England and going to Cambridge University? How about Cam Boston in Cam Cambridge and near Boston? She says that's okay. All right, this cat's going to jump up with me pretty soon. I'm going to have to kick it off the arm chair's arm. All right. <clears throat> So, um, let's go to another... Oh, what do you think about validity, Kabbalah? She says, it's good for some people, but not for you. For me, meaning. <clears throat> All right, validity. What do you think about consistency, Kabbalah? She says she likes flowers, so I have to be consistent on giving her, thinking to her, pretty flowers for her morning this morning and for all the other angels who uh, get the flowers. So they want kind of a, like a purple violets. That sounds pretty good. Maybe even some baby's breath that's um, kind of a hot pink color. <clears throat> she said thank you. Ahubat. To you, Kabbalah. She says Ahubat to me. All right, schemata, Kabbalah, no, 
And actually, she says that is okay for Quine, but not for me, because I am a poet, and schemata is not a poetical word. Scheme barely is a poetical word. Scene is more of a poetical word, but scheme, mata, is not a poetical word. Similarly with um, this other word, validity. Can you find any of those two words in a poem, in a famous poem, in a great poem? I doubt it. <clears throat> All right, so we went through uh, the idea of Cambridge, not in England, but in Boston. Um, now what I'm going to do is go to page 53, she says, <clears throat> and that's in the chapter Truth Functions, but it's on a subchapter called Words into Symbols. <clears throat> do we like this? Mm-hmm. All right. Now, shall I read some? An example of how such paraphrasing reduces varied idioms to uniformity has already been noted in the notation of negation. The notation of conjunction has a similar effect. <clears throat> For in ordinary language, conjunction is expressed not only by and, but also by but, and although, and however, by unspoken punctuation, and in various other ways. Consideration of but and although is instructive, for it brings out a distinction between what may be called logical and the rhetorical aspects of language. <clears throat> All right. So now let's see what we're turning the page. Here's one. In the notation P uh, then Q on insofar as it may be admitted as a version of if P then Q at all is a version at once of all those variant idioms. Note that the antecedent of a conditional corresponding to the P of P to Q is not always the part which comes first in the vernacular. First of all, P and Q are variables, uh -huh, she says. So what is P? Pig? And what is Q? Quail? No. Should I worry about what these variables mean? Uh -huh, she says. So going up a little bit, if P then Q, P only if Q, Q if P, Q provided that P, Q in case of P. <clears throat> She says, that's pretty good, but keep going. Should I keep going with her? Yes. It's kind of awkward. What do you think about awkwardness, Kabbalah? She hates it. She says, no, don't be awkward for me. And don't represent the angels as awkward, because they're really not. But I'm sleepy. I'm kind of weary, but I'm not dreary. <clears throat> so maybe some of this awkwardness from me, but not the angels is showing. What can I do, Kabbalah, to make you angels seem more bright uh, in a sense where you're not, uh, well, I know you're not awkward, but to represent you better, represent your non-awkwardness, your awkwardness less to others right now? She says, that's a pretty good question. And she's pointing my Attention to this book over here, Absorbing Perfections, by Moshe Edel. It's called Kabbalah and Interpretation, I think. Or Kabbalah and... I think it's Interpretation. Anyways, I'm looking at it past this chair. It's right behind me here. But I can see it through, the, through my um, video. Anyway, <clears throat> Kabbalah and Interpretation is the subtitle, I believe. I can't really read it from here, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, so, um, how about we read, uh, I'm gonna show like this little chart here <clears throat> because it's a logical chart. It, it happens to go with this uh, uh, 
interpretation of Kabbalah, because in the Kabbalah there's this diagram called the Ein Sof, or the without end, or the, it's also called the Tree of Life, but it's a, uh, it's a Sephiroth. Let me show it to you, actually. Um, the Tree of Life diagram has 10 uh, points on it, connected all by 22 lines, and the 22 lines are <clears throat> the Hebrew letters, and the 10 points are there's nothingness, the crown, there's wisdom, which is hakma, and the crown is called keter, there's bina, which is understanding, there's love, which is hesed, there's din, which is power, or compassion, or gevara. Then you've got Tiferet, which is beauty. You've got Splendor, which is Hod. You've got Netza, which is kind of like God's victory. You've got um, the Yetzad, which is uh, Joseph, um, which means uh, foundation. And then finally, you've got Malkut. So E-I-N-S-O-P-H is how to spell it. The image of what this looks like is... <clears throat> Something kind of like this, if you can see that. Those are the that's the tree of life, basically. Um, at any rate, I did a tree of death, or the for, and or it's not so much a, always called the tree of death, but it's more famous as being the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, where Adam and Eve picked the fruit. Oh, Eve picked the fruit off this tree when she wasn't supposed to. And I made a diagram of um, of that tree. So here's my diagram. And what it looks like is a, a rectangle like here. And that rectangle represents a rectangle like this. So it represents a book. And now you have this symbol, which is the famous symbol for knot, with a, a circle with the line crossed through it, not, so it really means no book. So that's pretty much the tree of death or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or even maybe the forbidden fruit. And on it, I have um, 11, if it, I did it this way because there, there's 11 intersections where I can make a point. So if you see like everywhere there's a like a, or an angle, there's an angle or an intersection. Where they are, there's a point. And so there are 11. And basically what this means is that in the Bible, in Genesis, in Bereshit, um, Joseph had 11 brothers. And his 11 brothers, at the beginning when he was young, sold him into slavery. They threw him into a ditch and sold him into, this, into slavery because he's really good at interpreting dreams and his father liked him better than them, so they were jealous of him. So they sold him into slavery. So they were bad uh, behaving brothers at that time. But Joseph, when he was went into Egypt as a slave, somehow by a matter of luck and uh, per, uh, perseverance, got a chance to um, rise in the ranks, interpreting people's dreams, and finally he was the next in, uh, next to, right next to the Pharaoh, the good Pharaoh. And then he saved the, the country, Egypt, by interpreting one of the dreams of Pharaohs uh, about how the, um, <clears throat> there was going to be seven years of um, feast and seven years of famine following the seven years of feast. So basically, that gave them time to like store up crops and grain and uh, have food so that the whole nation didn't starve. Anyway, and during this time when he was high up, uh, up next to the Pharaoh, his brothers got hungry where they were from. They came into Egypt and under the sky, they didn't know what happened to Joseph. They probably thought he died. But Joseph actually met with his brothers and... He, he, they didn't recognize him, but he recognized them. And so he forgave his brothers once he revealed himself to his brothers. And finally, he made up with them.
He's a good guy. Basically, what this is, these are the 11 points where, which represent the 11 brothers uh, of no book, basically. That's pretty much what I call the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or the tree of death, which is the uh, opposite of the tree of life diagram, uh, the iron stuff, which is also God, sometimes people say. So basically, um, that the tree of life has 10 sephiroth. This has 11 sephiroth. <clears throat> and because they represent brothers who are bad at one time, or still are bad in some sense of the word, because the Torah is an ever-living, ever-ongoing uh, book, these are the 11, and I don't have the names of my, well, I do have the names of my, these brothers of mine. I call them my brothers now, being like um, a kind of representative of Joseph in an interpretive way. Um, so like a modern kind of Joseph. But the uh, brothers of mine, let me find this real quick. Okay. <clears throat> so... The first brother I have is called Tim, but he's also named Will to Revenge, and he causes anger in me. The second brother I have is named Jessica, and Jessica is also called Shylock's Acceptance, and she calls she causes hesitation in me. Mike is my third brother. He's called Morning Morning. He causes humiliation in me. David called King Gunner, causes pain in me. Amy, uh, who's also named Power Shaded, causes the loss of Billy's, or my real me. Andy, who's also named More Knight, is my brother who causes forgetfulness in me. Matt, also named Open Paw, is my brother who causes babbling in me. Ben, who's also named Big Heaven, is my brother who causes need in me. Chris, named Spar Smart Tempest, causes the loss of a Merkaba or Paradise experience in me. Bobby, called Put Up Monument, is, m is my brother who causes sleepiness in me. Steve, finally, also called Saint Person, is my brother who causes confusion in me. So every time I'm not like in the best state of mind and I'm feeling like a weariness or these other attributes of which my brothers represent, then I made this diagram last night to kind of um, help me along, get past my, these problems or puzzles that I have. And the, like a book like this, which is sy symbolic logic, has like puzzles in it. So... Basically, uh, I got the idea to make my own um, tree here. So the the sev going reviewing the points on the tree. There's sleepiness, forgetfulness, confusion, hesitation, need, pain, anger, humiliation, babbling, loss of the Merkaba or paradise experience. And finally, the loss of the real me, you know, like when you don't feel yourself. <clears throat> so hopefully that might help a little bit. And I'm pretty much done. I'll give Kabbalah some uh, blue, um, blue gladiolas, I think. Some dark navy blue gladiolas. Thanks for watching.